Hi guys. Right, today I'm going to show you a couple of things with my Olimexino. A uh, bit of hot telemetry, a bit of fail safe, and this little shield that I've made up here. Uh, Alright then, so first things first, so this is running Clean Flight, and this is using Clean Flight Configurator. Uh, it looks just the same as Base Flight Configurator, except that it's uh, got a green icon, and um, there's a couple of extra features, but nothing too exciting. Um, so you can see that if I move the little board around here, it reacts accordingly on the screen. We can also see that I've got some battery voltage from an ADC reading happening there. We can also see that we've got 12 channel support here. Uh, so if I waggle some sticks around, you can see it going up. And if I waggle a couple of pots, you can see that AUX 5 and 6 are doing their thing. And maybe this one will do something. No, I haven't configured that one. Yeah, there's a there's another switch, and there's another switch. So basically you can see on the transmitter that I can activate loads of different switches. There we go. Which is pretty neat. There we are. And there's one more switch somewhere that's on still. There he is. Right. Okay, so over on the scope, you can see the motor outputs. That's hooked up here to the motor outputs on my little board here, which are the white cables. Um, I've got a single CP2102 serial port powering this. Uh, it's got a GPS connected up uh, to one of the serial ports here. It's got a Gropner receiver connected up with a telemetry wire going into a telemetry port over here. And I don't know whether you can see this, it's a bit, it's kind of buried in the middle, but between um, the jumpers where the GPS wires go in and the um, where the telemetry wires go in, there's actually a little tiny diode in there, and that's how you get the uh, hot telemetry working, by connecting a diode across the transmit and receive pins. Uh, this is a debug adapter, so you can generally ignore that. And I guess, here we go then, so if I arm it using a switch we can see that the oscilloscope changes to being armed and disarmed if I waggle the sticks it shows you the various different motor outputs um, that's also reflected on the screen over here so we can see the same signals on the scope and on the screen which is pretty nice so I can disarm using the switch and everything turns off uh, I'll quickly show you the fail safe so if I arm it then over on the uh, um, on the board over here, this yellow wire here, sorry, orange wire, is the PPM signal going in. So if I yank that out, you can see that it detects the fail safe, and then it'll wait 20 seconds, and then it'll turn everything off. The idea is that it's supposed to be keeping the copter level while it does this, and if I move this around, you can see that it still reacts accordingly while it's trying to land. I should have turned the timer down for this video, but there we go, there we go, and now it's turned off. So that's the failsafe definitely working on that using a Gropner transmitter by unplugging the cable. So if you have like some weird mid-air thing where your transmitter just fritzes out, it'll cover you for that. I'll reset this board. So it's resetting now, there's a reset button on the side of this, so I press that. Um, so what you can see there is um, some GPS activity going on here. This is telemetry requests for um, the electric air module for HOT. This is telemetry requests for GPS position uh, data. And this is just telemetry requests in general. This is just on the debug output. And over on the screen here, you can see that I've got telemetry data coming through. I'm basically just using this uh, milliamp hour as a little timer to indicate that packets are getting through correctly. Later on that can be used for the current sensor and so on. Um, so here's an example of fail safe with turning the transmitter off. So on the receiver tab up here we can see we're not armed like so. So if I arm it, and that didn't arm it because the throttle's in the wrong place. Let me arm it, there we go, and we can see that we've got appropriate motor outputs. 
And then if I turn the transmitter off, which is just as well because it's beeping with a flight timer, and we can see that I've turned that off and couldn't do it with one finger very easily. And we can see that the failsafe is now active again, and after 20 seconds or so, it'll turn itself off all the while, while still trying to keep the copter level. And we should see it on the screen and on the scope in a moment. And there we go. So that's the failsafe definitely working with the two different scenarios there where you unplug or you have a problem with your receiver in midair or if you go out of range or your transmitter turns off or runs out of battery or whatever. So that's that's pretty cool working there. Um, and that's using the PPM input. You can also use the serial RX input, but then you would have to forgo one of the... Um, either the telemetry or the GPS to use the serial RX. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, just thought I'd show you that, and that's a bit of progress for you. All right, take it easy. Okay, I just wanted to show you a bit of uh, configuration on the transmitter. Um, so for the hot telemetry, um, if you go into the menus and go into telemetry, you can pick which sensors you've got and at the moment there's only initial support for the electric air module and the GPS module. It's possible that we do the other ones later so you basically put the little tick boxes next to them by enabling it. You can enable and disable the tick boxes like so. And once you've got that enabled you can press down on the left hand button and then you can select what telemetry you want to see and then you can page through the different screens like so. And in due course we'll get these to show more information. At the moment there's just some test data coming through like the low and high cell values and the, the battery voltage and there's some current which just ticks up at the moment. Um, we can also go onto the GPS one. Now uh, because I'm indoors I'm not going to get much information here but we basically should get some information uh, some of this is incorrect at the moment, but the point is that the data is going through and we'll fix up the you know the different bits as as and when is appropriate. So the longitude and latitude and things like that, that's the kind of stuff we're interested in. Um, they should work at the moment. Okay, so I just want to show you how you get the uh, failsafe working. Um, it doesn't work using PPM mode with the, with the default settings, um, so you have to go in and change them. So you press and hold escape until it changes over and then you can go down and select um, settings and data view and then over on the right hand side over here you can page through there's a bunch of different pages there's a little indicator at the top which shows you that there's pages to go through um, so not the server menu but the failsafe menu so for each of the four channels um, you need to set the mode to be off so that it doesn't transmit any data on those channels if you turn the transmitter off or if it goes uh, out of range. So to do that you have to go into the channel and then you can pick the channel that you want to change. So we'll change one to start with and then the page will update to show you what the failsafe settings are for that particular channel. Then you can scroll down and pick the mode and the default mode I believe is hold so you need to set that to off. Um, you can check out the various other options for the failsafe settings but you can basically make it so that some channels do one thing and some channels do nothing and so on. But base flight and clean flight look for um, the lack of signal as opposed to the same continuous signal so you want to set it so that there's no signal output for those particular channels. Um, so we can have a look at the other channels so if I go up, pick channel 2, you can see that that one is also set to off. And if I go up to 4, I've already done this for the first four channels, but if I go up to 5, you can see that's got some default settings there, which is hold. And it it's, uh, basically puts the stick essentially in the lower position. You can see the failsafe position is, is that. And there's also delays and so on. Um, so yeah, so we can go into 4, see that that's off, go into 3 see that that is off and so on so that's how you get that to work if you don't do that the failsafe won't be it won't uh, the failsafe condition won't be detected by uh, the flight controller
Okay.